Welcome back everybody. Now I'm wondering how good are the deals at TJ Maxx? That's what I was wondering when I went into a location recently here in Las Vegas. I checked out the kitchen section, the home goods section, everything but the clothing really. And I bought a bunch of things to test out here. I also checked out the shelves to see what kind of deals and does they had there. So let's see how that went in today's video. All right, here's the haul from TJ Maxx. Let's take a look and see what we got. All right, let's just grab something out here and see what we got. First up, oh, this is the Firefly Sound Lamp. I paid 17 bucks for this. They say it's a speaker, lamp, clock, alarm, radio, and white noise. They kind of threw everything in this one. Kind of reminds me a little bit of the Casper Glow, which doesn't do as much and cost me 130 bucks. All right, next up in this bag, we've got, well, for Bailey, I had hit the pet section. This peanut butter bone, which is only about six bucks. This is kind of a no brainer. I'm sure she'll like this, but we'll see how she reacts to it. Now my bigger bag here, I got even more stuff. This one just looks interesting. This is the rake back scratcher. It literally is a back scratcher shaped like a rake. I'm a bit of a connoisseur of back scratchers, so we'll have to see how this one measures up to the ones that I already have. It's only six bucks, so it could be a good deal. Next up here is a big one here. This is a bladeless wind tunnel. They say it's heating and cooling. I paid 30 bucks, so this is the most expensive of the bunch, but I've always wanted a bladeless fan. This one has heating and cooling. I suppose you can use it all year long, so hopefully it's a good deal. All right, next up, this one, I kind of bought this one because the packaging was not clear, which if that makes any sense. It's the Brookstone on-the-go projector. It was only 13 bucks. They say it projects your phone, could be used with Apple or Android, but nowhere do they say how large of a screen you can get out of it. It just says, It'll make your screen larger. It, they just use the word larger. So for that reason alone, I bought it to see how, how it actually works and how big the screen actually gets projected. All right, here's another one. My affinity for ice cube trays is pretty apparent at this point. So I saw these, which are crushed ice cube trays, which I haven't tried these before. I've, quite, I've tried a lot of ice cube trays, not tried those yet. They're only six bucks, it looks interesting. So I'll have to clean these off and uh, fill them up tonight and see how they actually work. And last but not least, this one looks interesting. At first it looks like a, a snow globe, but they say that it's actually an LED light display and speaker. I only paid 20 bucks for it. They say it lights up to music and the packaging looks very impressive. If it looks even close to that, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be impressed. But before I test out the products I bought, I wanted to mention a few things in the store I saw that I didn't buy that I thought were worth mentioning. And that's my segment that I call the deals and duds. Now the first thing I noticed was the handy heater turbo heat, which is the one handy heater I don't think I've tried. They're selling for 20 bucks. They usually go for about 25 to 30. So to me, that's actually a pretty good price for that one. Next up, another one that looked interesting that I almost bought was the Brookstone heated and vibrating eye massager. I couldn't find this one on Amazon or even the Brookstone website. So maybe it's discontinued but most of the vibrating eye massagers I've seen are much more than that, so that seems like a pretty good price. Another Brookstone product I saw was their heated coffee mug. Similar models on Amazon are about 18 bucks. This one was only eight, so that seemed like a pretty good price for that one. Now I saw these collapsible lanterns which remind me a lot of the TAC light lantern and the atomic beam lantern I tried years ago. Now 10 bucks is not a bad price, especially when they can include the batteries for you, but there's a lot of competitors out there, even as low as five bucks, so I'm not sure this is the best price out there. I might pass on that one, but take a look at the flashlight they have. That one looks like the tech light elite they're selling that one for eight bucks which i do think is a competitive price another item i saw there that was just kind of cool to look at was this raider snow globe now i'm not much of a, a football or raiders fan but it does look like the elysian stadium and the detail was pretty impressive for 15 bucks that could be a good gift idea now they had a cotton candy maker there for about 25 bucks most cotton candy makers i've seen are anywhere from 30 to 60 so that seems like a pretty good deal on that one now back in the kitchen section i noticed this cuisinart mini chopper which looks like a smaller version of the slap chop or the oxo one that i tried or even the one from the 1950s that I have from Ronco. The problem is that even the normal size slap chop is kind of small to begin with, so I can't even imagine using a smaller version than that. Even though it's only eight bucks, that's something I'd probably pass on because I can't see something that size being very useful. Now, I also saw this Cuisinart veggie and fruit chopper for about 17 bucks. It looks a lot like the Vidalia Chop Wizard I tested years ago, and that is a good product. This one's currently on Amazon for about 23, so their price actually is pretty good on this one. Now, besides their vast selection of clothing, which I didn't really get into, they had a pretty good selection of Christmas items, a decent toy section and even a pretty good pet section as well. So those are my deals and duds for TJ Maxx and now it's time to test out the products I did buy. All right, let's fill up these crushed ice cube trays and see how it goes. Normally I would just fill this over the sink, but for filming purposes, it's easier right here. I'm just kind of curious how, how much this holds. It doesn't look like it holds very much because small those are. Let's see. 
All right, so it, I got it filled up here. It looks like it was just about four ounces, so not a lot of ice, but you know, it might be kind of cool to have crushed ice. So I'm gonna fill both these up. Pull them out tomorrow and see how they look. All right, here we go. This, is, this ice has been in the freezer for about 24 hours, so we should have no problem getting some beautiful crushed ice out of here. This is the uh, final result right out of the freezer. It doesn't look too bad. Let's crack these into a bowl and see what we got. Here we go, first one. They don't just come right out like I was hoping they would. I thought it was gonna be one big drop, but now I'm having to kind of push them out individually. Yeah, this is, this is more work than I was anticipating. There must be a technique for getting this out better than, than I'm doing, but I don't know what that is. I think I got most of them out of here. So the ice cubes themselves look pretty good. They're kind of nice uniformly square cubes. I kind of like that. I don't know if crushed ice is even really the term I would use for these. Just really small ice cubes. All right, so the first one was a bit difficult to get the cubes out. That was kind of a lot of work, actually. Maybe letting it sit will actually make them fall a little bit easier, so let me try that. All right, so this one's been sitting for about five minutes. Hopefully it's easier than the first one. We shall see. Here we go. Well, I guess it's a little bit easier. I don't know if there, there must be a technique. There must be a technique. And maybe, maybe this is a technique. I'm just kind of rolling it backwards. That got most of it. I don't know, I think it, it produces a decent amount for how small the trays are. And I, I like the small little cubes. It doesn't really look like crushed ice to me, but it does look like really mini cubes, which I do kind of like. All right, so this is not what I thought it was. I cracked it open, I read the instructions, and it, it really, this is a, an empty box with a hole cut out and a tube with a lens on it. There's it's no electronics, it's not really a, is it a projector? That's really kind of a pushing it. It's more like a, a third grade science project. So here's what I did. I, I, I assembled the, the, the lens, and this is, this is already prepared, so this is, there's nothing I can really do with that. This back part opens where your phone goes in here, right back there, and then it shines to that lens. That's it. You gotta turn your phone so it doesn't auto rotate off. You gotta put your brightness 100% and I'm guessing it's gonna be a very dim image on the, on the wall, but we shall see. The other thing is that with my case on my phone, six and a half inches, it only goes to 6.3. It won't even fit with my case in there. It's, it's, it's kind of wedged in there. I gotta take my case off. Right, I've got my video playing. I'm gonna turn the auto rotate off. So then I'm supposed to put it in upside down. They also give you this, this gel sticky pad that supposedly helps keep your phone uh, from sliding around in there. I'm not sure how much that's gonna help. Placing the phone on the sticky pad. And I also have my brightness 100% like they suggest. Closing it up. Let me turn the lights off and see who we got here now. All right, this is a pretty dark room and you, I can kind of, oh, there's something. I can see something. And, it's, and the text is even backwards. Wow, that is so dim. There's my dim face. Well, apparently if you slide this out, you can actually kind of adjust the focus that way as well. All right, I'll hold it close to the wall here. And you can see this blurry. If I pull this back part out, I can kind of focus it. There we go, I'm in focus. It's, it's about the same size as my phone, but just dimmer. Pull it back here. This is about three feet away from the wall here, and you can see that. Look at that brilliant projection. Look at that crisp picture. It's huge. Who needs a big screen TV when you've got this, right? All right, seems like about three feet away is about as far as you can get, and it's, it's barely visible. It is barely visible, and I can't even tell if it's in focus because it's so, it's so dim. All right, so I thought I was buying a projector, and this ain't it. This is more like a third grade science project, not something you buy at TJ Maxx. All right, it's time to test out this monstrous back scratcher. Look at the size of this thing, it's huge. Now, I'm kind of a fan of back scratchers. This is the one I normally use, which is kind of a premium back scratcher already. This is the cactus back scratcher. But if you can see from this bin right here, actually, I think I sat on. So it's, it doesn't work as well as it used to, and this is kind of stuck. It still works, but I think it's on its last leg. That's one of the reasons this looks like a compelling alternative. So let's see how much uh, coverage we get on my back itself. Oh yeah, that's actually my entire back. Oh yeah. That does reach my, I mean, that's really the, almost the width of my entire back. Wow, that's a, that's a massive back scratcher. You know, sometimes you can't really find a spot. This will find the spot. It seems a little bit scrapey. Let me see on my, on my skin here. Ah, oh yeah. See, this is not good on bare skin. Nope, no. It's very scratchy. It's weird, through a shirt, it feels nice. On bare skin, not so much. It's also kind of funny, they, they had the sheet in there, which really just, they, they actually had to include a picture to fill up the space because there's so little to say. All it says is to insert the handle and put the screw in there. So they had to include an entire sheet of paper for that. You know what though? It, it works. It works. It actually covers your entire back. 
If you've got someone who likes using back scratchers, this might be the ultimate upgrade. The thing is huge. When you compare it to my normal back scratcher, it's really hard to compare the two of them. As good as this one is, this is a whole other level. Let's try the Fireburst LED speaker. Now here it is. Now I gotta say, I, I, I can kind of tell from looking at it, it's not gonna be as impressive as the packaging. I mean, this made it look like you see these like big 3D explosions inside. But from what I'm looking at, it looks like it's just gonna be a pattern on, on the outside of the ball. All right, so I charge it up, I pair it with my phone. I gotta say, when you turn it on, there's a tone when it comes on that you can't control the volume of, it's very loud. Here we go. <laughs> so, so loud. <laughs> That is so loud. That is so loud. Let me see, pairing it with my phone, Bluetooth. It looks like it's gonna show up as the very easy to, to remember, P-Y-F-P-R-I-W-O-D. So it's easy to remember at least. All right, so I'm paired up here. So let me put some music on, because right now it's not doing much. And really, all there is is on off. So there isn't any other controls to it. Let me put some non-copyrighted music on here. All right, so you can control the volume of the music with your phone but you can't control the volume of that tone that's horribly loud. Let me turn these lights off. I mean, it's not that bad, really. So if I pause it, it, it stops. So it does know that there's music coming through there, so that's kind of cool. It does seem to react to the music, but man, it doesn't look like the packaging. It's really not that bad of a display, but it, it's nothing like this. It, it doesn't even look like this. When I first saw the packaging in the store, I thought, wow, if it looks like that, 20 bucks is a great deal. But when I see the final result, I'm like, eh, 20 bucks might be a bit much. <laughs> I think if the, the packaging didn't disappoint me so much, I would, I would think it's pretty good. But I it's such a letdown over what they show that I'm, I'm a little disappointed. It does work though. The speaker's pretty good. The, the effect isn't bad either. That tone when you turn it on and off is, is so loud though. Here's try, try it again. <laughs> that's like ear piercing and you can't turn that off there is a lamp mode by the way we'll just leave it on like this so if you don't want to have the flashing colors you don't want to have it connected to the music you can just leave it on in lamp mode but it looks like there's no changing colors or anything so i, I don't know I, I think this is not that bad but i feel kind of bait and switched by the packaging All right, let's start off with this bladeless fan and see how well it works as far as heating and cooling goes. All right, so the there's really just one button here. There's a button here and an indicator there. Press the button once. We have fan, we have a fan. We have a medium speed, high speed, and off. It's also color coded. The dark blue is low, lighter blue is medium, and green is high. And you can hold this down for two seconds to get heat which was gonna be a red. Now the heat has a safety mechanism, so if you lift it up, it turns off. That's the safety me mechanism right there. First use, here we go. All right, I got on low. I mean, it feels like a pretty uh, standard fan. Nothing really to write home about here. That's on low, medium. Not, not bad. High, it's kind of loud. Also what's weird is I noticed that when I put my hand right in front of it, it blows upward a little bit instead of straight out. It seems like it's, that's the, the cone of projection right there. Let's try the heat now. See how warm this actually gets. It's warm, it's not, it's by no means hot. It's slightly warm, but we'll let it go for a little bit. Looking at the thermal imager here, it seems like most of the heat is kind of down at the bottom. Looks like we're getting anywhere from the 90s up to, oh, 116. 113. So it looks like it's getting warm, but not hot. It's warm, not hot. Let's compare it to this mini space heater I use in the wintertime sometimes. Now this one gets hot. It's already pretty warm. When I use this in the wintertime, I can only use it for a few minutes because it gets so hot. Look at the difference in temperature, 236. It's just, it's just broiling hot compared to the other one. Maybe too hot. It might be too hot for some people. This might not even be a good thing. Let's get the old BT meter going and see what kind of results you get for the fan there. All right, we are on low, about a foot away. Getting uh, maybe a 3.1. Medium, getting a 3.8. On high, we're getting a 4.2, 4.5 on high. Let's compare it to this uh, relatively small Honeywell now. This is on low. Whoa. Whoa, is that a big difference? Wow, this is on low, about eight. Medium, 9.6, 9.8. We're getting bursts of 11 up there in the, in the high range. 
All right, so, so it does work. I will say that it does work. It's kind of cheap feeling, kind of cheap, but it does blow air, does blow heat. It just doesn't do it as well as other units do. So, you know, for the price, not that bad though. Let's take a look at the Firefly sound lamp. All right, I charged it up. And what's weird is they say to use the charging cable as, a, as an FM antenna. So you kind of leave it plugged into it if you want to use the FM radio. Got some basic controls here. This is the mode button. This is forward and backward. Here's the display, pause button, alarm button, and the clock button right there. There's also a button on top here to change the light pattern. They even have a hook on the bottom so you could, you could hang it upside down. So they kind of thought of everything, it seems like. All right, so back here is the on off switch. Let's turn it on. White light here and a nice pleasant tone that wasn't as loud as the other one. Now I, I paired this with my phone, but I was hoping that pairing my phone would automatically set the clock. It didn't, I had to manually set it. I guess that's not too big of a deal though. All right, so let's hit the, hit the mode button once to get the radio. Behavior, the kind of language used, and who that so it's searching for different channels here and you can, uh, it kind of goes quick. It kind of goes quick, it's searching quickly. So I can't really play the FM radio for copyright reasons, but it does work well. And this antenna seems to be pretty good. But let's move on to the next feature, which would be the white noise. We've got some kind of loud water and you can hold these volume buttons here to go up and down the volume so you can adjust it. They don't really say what the uh, what the different white noise are. This sounds like the ocean, kind of. It sounds more like in between the ocean and static. That's not white noise. There's some guitar and some waves in the background. More waves and seagulls this time. I'm not sure what that's supposed to be. It sounds like, I don't know what that's supposed to be. Some nice keyboards, more keyboards, and back to water. I'm, I'm not sure I love any of those white noise sounds, but, but they are there. But let's move on to the next feature here, which is, it says hi-fi. See if we can get some music on here. And this one, you can adjust the volume on the unit itself. There we go. The speaker sounds pretty good. Speaker sounds pretty good. All right, while the music's playing quietly, I'm gonna turn these lights off and check out the light modes. All right, this is low, medium, bright, warm, and off. Now, if you hold it down, you get different colors. Red, green, blue, yellow, teal, a violet, I guess, kind of a, oh, this is a changing pattern and back off. Paired with a speaker, it's actually kind of nice. There's also an alarm feature in here, so you can put this by your bedside and use it for a, an alarm clock. So when comparing to the Casper Glowlight, which was like something like 130 bucks, which I, th I still think goes for about 100. This for 17, which has a speaker, an alarm clock, white noise, although white noise isn't that great. And an FM radio, I think there's no competition. To me, this kind of lower tech $17 model from TJ Maxx is better than this higher tech model from Casper. It's not perfect, but the price is right. And last but not least, I got my dog toy. I got my peanut butter bone for Bailey. It smells like peanut butter. She's right over there. I'm gonna go give it to her and see how she likes it. Well, there she is waiting by the Christmas tree for her present, which would be this from TJ Maxx. Let's see what she does. She's gonna, she's gonna find a spot for that. She's gonna find a spot for it. She's walking around. She's, she's happy to have something new. There she goes. That's her spot when she gets something new usually. She's gonna sniff it, lick it. The tail says that she's happy about it. She's gonna sit down there on the couch and work on it. What do you think, Bailey? Is that a good one? Oh yeah. All right, I'll, I'll check back in a little bit and let you know how she's doing, but her first reaction seems pretty good. So in the end, I would say my favorite of the bunch is the back scratcher. As someone who's bought many back scratchers over the years, this is on a completely different level. But clearly my biggest disappointment is the projector, which is basically an empty box with a lens in it. It's not really that clear from the packaging what you're getting, and to me, that is an utter failure. But overall, I am a fan of TJ Maxx, and I love going in there and seeing what kind of deals they have. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you next time.